Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, June 20th, around 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Shivaloosh in the Kamchatka putting on a show. But the big story, June snow at Tahoe for a third time this year. Whew. Keep calm. It's June time. Lake Tahoe has experienced unusual snow three times this June. And according to experts, it's not enough to impact the ongoing severe California drought, but it's enough to provoke amazement among travelers and curiosity from the meteorologists. <laughs> what does that even mean? Freeze warning issued. Did you know it was freeze warnings yesterday? Yes, Klamath Basin, northeastern Klamath County. It's still cold out there. In fact, record low temperatures at altitude. Enough to cool New England and leave snow on Mount Washington over Father's Day weekend. Holy macaroni. Record-breaking cold temperatures correspond to a cool-down New England for Father's Day weekend. Record-breaking cool-down. Let's take a look at some video. This photo was posted to the Observatory Facebook page. All that white you see, ice and snow. Let's go to meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Jackie, that snow <laughs> is staying up there. Oh gosh, yeah, what a difference a day makes. I mean, this weekend feels like a completely different season than what we had out there yesterday with some of that heat and humidity. And look at the current temperatures. Yeah, Mount Washington, 30 degrees. That's it, below freezing. The actual air temperature up on some of the peaks and the summits and the mountains. So that's why they've been seeing some of those snow showers and some of that icing. Wow. I cannot believe, well, I can believe it. About every 10 years, there is a solar cycle, 10 or 11 years, which controls the weather. And so a lot of people forget 10 years ago that it was snowing right before summer. And there's still some more snow in the forecast here in the next couple days, some snow coming to Montana and BC and Alberta. As bluebird days and bumper snow in the other hemisphere. This is down in Australia and New Zealand. And here, pandemic hit resorts in Victoria and New South Wales are celebrating perfect conditions and early openings. And why are they open early? Well, early snowfall has already seen decades-long records broken across Victoria and New South Wales where results like Mount Bueller, Threadbow, and Perisher were all able to open well before the official start date because of record June snow. Ho, ho. Mainstream media is not reporting on that on the other hemisphere. Now are they? Contreras fire grows to more than 20,000 acres. This is in southern Arizona, and it's putting nearby residents on alert. The Contreras fire burning in southern Arizona has grown to 20,360 acres, prompting possible evacuations for nearby residents. Uh, so what we did was we pulled up the Pima County Sheriff's Department for you. I'll leave you links below on the Contreras fire. There's a map attached to show the precise area identified, and residents shouldn't consider vol voluntarily re relocating outside the affected area. So grab your emergency go kit and go. There's phone numbers and there are links. Uh, to that fire. Also, big concerns today as the monsoon has kick in, kicked into high gear, especially here. Thankfully, it is sunny and bluebird skies out today to dry out from our over one inch of rain we got, which is about a twelfth of the rain we get all year. And more rain is forecast for here, but today it's in New Mexico as New Mexico counties are racing against the clock as the threat of flooding looms. As the monsoon rains continue across the state, concerns over flash flooding are high in the communities of San Miguel and Mora counties. So let's take a look. Flash flood concerns are high in the communities of San Miguel and Mora counties. News 13's Gabe Chavez is here with what they're doing to prepare for that possible flooding. Gabe. Annalisa, a flash flood watch is now in effect across the state and in San Miguel and Mora counties, a flash flood warning will be in effect until 930. Many in the community have been preparing for a few days now. However, they are still aren't ready and need as much help as they can get. Earlier, the clouds were on their way into Mora County, which you can see in these photos from a viewer. To prepare for the rain, the communities of Mora, Holman, and Cleveland have been working alongside the state and the National Guard to fill sandbags and remove fencing to alleviate the damage flooding can bring. And though they have been working at it for days, some of the concerns are part of the Mora River rising. If there's enough rain that the, that the river does start really rising significantly through downtown, uh, then we're going to have issues there too. 
Rain isn't only coming down in northern New Mexico. In Grants, you can see in this viewer submitted video, water has started to cover the road, making it difficult for drivers to get across. So we got water coming across the road already in Grants. So heads up if you're in those burn scar regions by the Calf Canyon um, and the Hermit's fire there. Many com communities are not ready, but all you have to do is get out of low-lying regions. So if it starts raining heavily and you see the rivers rising or even water running down the road, get up to high ground. It's that simple. Dangerous and record heat is spreading from north central to southern U.S. and monsoons could bring flash flooding to New Mexico. Dangerous heat and potential record high temperatures are expected this week from the upper Midwest and Great Lakes to the southern U.S. Heat advisories and excessive heat warnings are now in effect. Those are the areas in orange and magenta here. Monsoonal showers and thunderstorms may produce flash flooding in New Mexico through Tuesday, especially near recent burn scars. So all of these are areas under flood watch. Click on your county for more information and get to high ground. There is a threat for severe weather here up through North and South Dakota uh, during the day today and into this evening. And that will continue and be over by the morning. And then another threat for severe weather does not uh, pop up here until Friday and that's for Minnesota so that is the short-term forecast as if we just roll it back here keep an eye on New Mexico here just in the next six to 12 hours that's some heavy rain on those burn scars right there that's where the Kefs Canyon and Hermit's fire is so heads up there will be flooding and we will be reporting on it probably tomorrow take a look at that big explosion there for Wednesday that's in the Sholo area. Could be some heavy thunderstorms, so heads up if you're there. And that's going to move back over into New Mexico and then up into our Four Corners region here on Wednesday. So Wednesday, tomorrow, we should be getting some more rain. And that's insane. This year's local wheat crop is nearly double due to a wet, cool spring up in the northwest. And that's good news, especially with food shortages looming, especially grain. Grain supplies are, well, short and with double the output this year up there, there's 131 bushels of winter wheat this year, up 85% from last year, which is looking pretty good for the Pacific Northwest. What's not looking good is hail damage on brushies, and this is the hail uh, down in Brushy Mountain, and that's in North Kakalaki or North Carolina, depending on where you're from. A heavy hailstorm in the small area of Brushy Mountain Community Friday afternoon damaged peach, apple, crops, as well as gardens and homes. And you can see some of the damage there on the hail. That's not the only fruit suffering uh, in the last 24 hours. Heat wave is devastating India's mango harvest. Farmer sea yields dropping by 70%, damaging livelihoods and pushing up prices. It's the last thing we need because everyone needs a good mango. Now, Big news. We reported two days ago about a record spike in Greenland's mass balance, four kilotons in a single day during the melt season. Well, it has now gone off the chart. On Saturday, Greenland's surface mass balance gained a record smashing seven gigatons. Seven gigatons. Uh, one of the highest gains that would be even considered during the gain season is happening now during the melt season in Greenland. An unprecedented mid-June gain has helped push the ice sheet surface mass budget well above the 1981-2010 average. And there you see the blue line moving in the wrong direction. It's going up when it should be going down. Here is the 2011-2012 drop off the cliff. And well, something different is happening currently. Yeah, and it's called Record Ice Gain on Greenland. And there are crickets from the mainstream media. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We just had a 5.4 kicking off here in Vanuatu. At 10 kilometers, surface quake, so not, nothing out of the ordinary uh, worldwide that we're looking at. And that's good news. All is quiet on the Western Front. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Fuego. Krakatau. Semaru. Shivalush. Ibu, Ducono, Reventador. Now, Chivalouche has been puffing spectacularly uh, recently. This one to 27,000 feet with a five kilometer ash plume from the summit. Here you see the summit and that plume rising way up into the sky. Now, a giant sunspot has doubled in size in 24 hours and is now pointed at Earth. Well, Newsweek got that right, and that would be sunspot 3038 there. AR 3038, and that is actually not the latest. So something is slow there, so let's go to the latest here. Boom, because it has passed center desk and is in fact directly earth-facing. That's a live shot. 
Now, what does that mean for us? Well, there is a, a chance for some activity coming from this, but currently there is very low la level activity in the GOES X-ray flux, which is good news. But that doesn't mean the probability is not high. If we look at the sunspot summary, we can see active region 3038 is beta gamma class with a 70% C, C flare potential, 25% M flare and 10% X flare potential over the next 24 hours. And you can see that magnetic mixing there that is not good and causes the flaring. So we'll keep a close eye on this sunspot as it is directly facing Earth in the latest HMI intensity. And that's Earth is, well, where you're sitting relative to this sun. Isn't that fun? The situation is serious. Germany plans to fire up its coal plants as Russia throttles the gas supplies. Now, this is because of the Green New Deal and the Green Movement and all the stupidity of this green nonsense, which is actually hurting humanity and destroying the planet. Now, what, Germany was one of the most sustainable energy producers on Earth, but it shut down all its nuclear and... And this is what we're left with. We're left with them turning back on coal-fired power plants while the oil and gas is being strangled around the world on purpose. Now a rock slammed into Jupiter, creating the brightest impact flash in 28 years. Did you know about this? Jupiter was hit by a building-sized object. I'm sure a lot of you know about the string of pearls that hit Jupiter quite some time ago. But last October, professional astronomers spotted a bright flash right here on Jupiter. Something hit the largest planet in the solar system, releasing the equivalent of two megatons of TNT worth of energy comparable to the Tunguska impact that rocked Siberia in 1908. It was the most powerful known impact Jupiter has received since comet Shoemaker-Levy 9, and we were just mentioning that, which smacked into the planet in 94. So this was last year, and we do have video, but it's... Well, let's just say less than spectacular, but keep a close eye on the planet. Now, remember, this is coming from a telescope on Earth, so that's why it's a little jiggly, and you're going to see a white spot light up right there, and that, in fact, is the impact and the plasma discharge. Holy macaroni. So, if you didn't know, now you know a rock slammed into Jupiter last October, creating the brightest impact flash in 28 years, and that's a boom. To knowledge, proper prior planning prevents best poor performance in a dystopian world where you need to turn to alternative sources to get information that's unbiased. We love you. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, and the heroes that share this video. Be safe. And that's a boom.